In this video, we're going to take a look at the nav menu from Elementor Pro, a really cool and powerful menu system which enables you to fully customize your menu. And I'm quickly going to dive into the new Elementor Pro version 2 menu templating to show you how I'm using that as well. It's really cool. Let's go. All right, welcome to the video. We're going to look at the nav menu from Elementor Pro, which is a fully customizable menu system, really powerful, really sexy. Woot. And uh, it also goes well with the new version 2 header templating system, which is really cool because you can fully customize your header with templates. So I'll just quickly show you how I did that. This header you see here is a little bit customized from me, just colors and stuff, but basically is a template from the new Elementor version 2 or 2.0 um, header templating system. So you can template the header, the footer, the blog, the archive. If you haven't seen the other video I did on that, you can click, I think it's up here, uh, for the blog and archive templating system, which I just did yesterday. It may not be published one day apart, but you'll see that on that video. So if you're interested in fully customizing a website with Elementor instead of having to squeeze it into a theme and get really annoying kind of options that you don't want to have to do, then this is a great alternative. So this template uses the nav menu from Elementor Pro, which is a really customizable system. You can see here, I have some animations, some square around my menu, and then you also have, if I jump in and show you the mobile view, you also have this menu with the mobile view, which I have customized with my brand colors. They're a little bit off here because I've been playing with a new red. But basically, you can fully customize this whole menu down here. And using the templating system, I can also fully customize the header. And this now appears on the website as a whole. So this is the whole website. This is the home page. <clears throat> it's a blank website. So there's not much to see, but this is fully customized from the template and nav header system. So really cool, really powerful. Let's dive into some of the features of the nav menu so you know how to use this puppy because it can get a little bit messy. There's kind of a few things everywhere, but uh, the main things we want to look at is first you need to choose what actual links are in your menu. And there's a drop down in here where you can choose any pre set up menus in WordPress. So before you do anything, you have to set up at least one menu in WordPress, which you're using and is set as your main menu although it doesn't really matter because you can choose it from the drop down here. So if you're not familiar with that, you need to go into WordPress appearance and then menus. And I'm just going to open this in a new window. And then you need to set up a menu that you can use. And this was set up from the mega menu tutorial I did on Ocean WP, so it's not quite exactly how we would want it. Or actually, let's just create a new menu. Just so you can see what you have to do. I'm not going to waste too much time on this because it's a basic WordPress thing. You basically create a menu. You can drop in your pages. You can search for pages. You can create uh, links to posts, links to categories. You can create custom URLs, which is good for going to the home page, for example, which may not appear under your pages. Um, or specific locations and or even external links if you want you can do that in here so let's just add all of these to the menu and then save it always remember to save the menu otherwise everything you've done is for nothing or newt as they say here in switzerland so now that we've done that let's reload this and you'll see this new menu appear in the drop down. My website's a little bit slow. I'm going to move servers soon because of that. This is actually a test server. But as you can see here, we now have that new menu called menu in here. And when we apply that, we get our three 
elements in here. So that's the first thing you need to do. Make sure you create a menu or you can click on this uh, red menu button. Next, you have to decide the layout of your menu. Typically, it'll be horizontal and remain horizontal. If you've got a sidebar kind of navigation, you can do a vertical, which will now change to vertical. Not particularly useful for most websites, so we're gonna go back to horizontal. Um, you can choose to do it left, center, or right aligned. If you're doing a normal uh, menu where you have the logo next to the menu, and I forget I'm using Elemental here and not Thrive. I can't just drop this next to it. I need to bring in some columns. So if you want a two column layout and you want your logo next to your menu, and we're gonna to need to put in a little bit of space there. Just using my mouse to scroll here. So you can also do this and then you can do a left aligned logo and do it like that. But that's not the version we're doing here. So I'm gonna reload this and get back to the version that we had, which I think is better looking, but it all depends. You don't wanna to take too much space up on your header because you wanna make sure people can see the content as fast as possible on your website. So if your header gets too big, especially on mobile, or on laptops, it can take up too much space before people see anything. So you don't want to go too crazy with this. Um, I would reduce this gap a little bit. Potentially, you want to have your spacing nice. So editing the nav theme. You can also decide what kind of animation, style of animation and thing that appears on the animation. So these are these two or three things here. So we can have underline and then you can have slide underline, change the animation. You can see here, very sexy. You could do double line, which is above and below, and you can change the animation. So you've got a whole bunch of options here of what you can do with the animation. Pretty cool, right? Thumbs up. You can also change the indicator for the submenu. As you can see here, this has a submenu and it's indicated by the chevron, the little arrow. You can change, change it to a triangle, a plus. There's a few options here, so that's pretty cool. You can change the color of everything in the style area. You can change the text style, change it to green. Doesn't really work right, let's change it to gray. I would actually make that a little bit bigger. You should always have your text very easy to read. And potentially we would want that also to be a little bit bolder. So then maybe I would bring the color up a bit because bold tends to make things look a lot darker as well. So you can play with fully with the fonts and colors and bold and everything just as you would with any text element in Elementor. You can change how much padding is between these elements. Obviously, the more you have, the less space you can have. You need to squeeze them in because it's got to fit also on narrower screens. Uh, and mobile will obviously stack. I'll show you that in a second. You can do the amount of padding uh, vertically as well. So you can bring that in. You can set the space between, which is, not necessarily because the padding will also create the underline. So if you increase the amount of padding, your underlines will also get bigger. So well, does that actually not happen? I'm not sure what the difference is between the padding and the spacing. Same thing to me. You can also change all of the normal elemental styles, background color, all of that stuff. Although you typically wouldn't do that on a lot of menus, you, unless you want to have a black background um, Actually, let's change that to a color. So we'll do a gray background and then you would do white text here. So you could have that as well if that works for you. I don't think it looks very good because it doesn't go full width, but in some cases it can work or you can have a full underline on the menu that looks nice as well. So anyway, not gonna get bogged down with that. The other interesting area is the mobile. 
So you can decide what breakpoint the mobile comes in at. So if your menu is really wide and there's tons of stuff in it, you might want to go to mobile earlier. So on a tablet or something, say a thousand pixels, because otherwise it gets too squished and it tends to break onto two lines and doesn't look good. So the standard is kind of a small tablet, sort of 760 pixels. But if you're having trouble with your menu getting squished, you might want to change this breakpoint to a thousand. It's a pity you can't fully customize this because you have to do that in CSS, which is a whole other kettle of fish, as we know. Um, you can also decide how the mobile menu appears. So let's have a look at the mobile menu. It's not appearing on tablet, so let's change that to a thousand. Now it appears, and I've got it as a red menu. So I'm gonna get rid of the background here and just change that back to white so we can see the mobile menu properly. So as you can see, it's the typical hamburger. You can change the color of it, which is in the style, and it is not obvious, but it's called the toggle button. So the toggle button is the color of that, and the drop down is something else. You can also change what it looks like. You can have none. And I don't know what happens then because that's not really a mobile menu. <laughs> it should have the word menu actually. That's really strange. You can decide whether it's left, right or center aligned. And again, if you've got it next to your logo instead of below your logo, then you would want it right aligned or left aligned if you've got it on the left hand side. So fully customizable, really powerful. Um, you can pretty much do anything in here. So that is the nav menu for Elementor. And I was just gonna quickly show you my template. I've used a header template, which is in the new templates section of Elementor. Elementor Pro, you click on the header to create a new header. This is kind of a bonus section. So thumbs up on the video if you like bonuses. Let's create a new template. And I'm going to create another new header, I call this one header two. I'm just going to show you some of the templates they have available. So it's really cool. You can quickly customize your website from these templates. And that's basically what I did before I started this tutorial. You've got all of these pro level templates you can use. So let's just take um, this one up here. I don't think I would use this one, but let's just do it anyway and see how it looks. So obviously my logo doesn't really work on here. You need to go in and change the size of that logo and maybe left align it. So now you've got your menus with a different kind of animation. Again, that's the nav menu element and it is fully customized, probably also on mobile. Looks like that. So that's really cool. You can create the whole template system for your website. So when you publish that, it asks you where you want to publish it. And we just say entire site. You can also change the header for different sections of your website and publish that. And now if we go to my homepage, we will have the different header. Now it's probably conflicting with the other one. So we need to go back to Elementor templates. And I now have two headers published so I would need to probably delete this one. So obviously you can't have two. The latest one doesn't take priority, which is how I would have programmed it, but there you go. So there you have the new template that we created. So as you can see, the kinds of things you can do with the nav menu are really cool. And if you haven't looked at Elementor Pro, I seriously recommend it, especially since version two, because you can now fully customize a website with Elementor as well as having all these new blog post elements, archive elements, header elements. It's really crazy. Elementor is way ahead of any other page website builder plugin on WordPress. You can use the link below this video to go and have a look at that. And if you buy it, I get a small little commission, which is a thumbs up. Thank you for supporting this channel because it takes me usually hours to produce these videos. Yes, it might take you 10 minutes to watch it. <laughs> it takes me hours to create it. I wish it didn't. Um, yeah, so if you want to check out more Elementor 
videos that I've created, I will also put a link up here so you can have a look at that. I've got a whole stack of them and more to come because I'm using this in more and more customer projects and it is really cool. So go check out Elemental Pro, link below, and you'll see me in the next video.